lads and ladies, welcome to the Junior Classics. Hi there, I'm Sir Bradley Hassey, a teller of borrowed tales. Join me as I share stories of courage, adventure, and wonder. But don't take my word for it. You can find out for yourself on today's Junior Classic. Welcome back, everyone. I am Sir Bradley Hassey, guardian of the written word and your guide through the Junior Classics. Our mission is to safeguard the wisdom in the classics and inspire children and families with a love of good reading and a real and lasting interest in Western literature, history, and scholarship. Welcome back to my little bears from Bertaria, to the unauthorized, my local listeners from Crosspoint, the region, and listeners around the world. My special thanks and appreciation to my Patreon supporters who help keep the show going and growing. If you like what we're doing, creating stories for the good of your kids, consider supporting us on Patreon for five bucks a month or subscribe to unauthorized.tv. Well, this is it, our last episode of Tales from India. I have three short fables to introduce to you today, but first... Lost and found words! Listen carefully to these words and their meanings and try and spot them during the show. Our first word today is carcass. A carcass is the dead body of an animal. Ugh, kind of gross. When you are riding in a car and see a dead animal on the road, that is a carcass. Our second word is drought. A drought is a long period of unusually low rainfall, which leads to a shortage of water. A drought can also be called a dry spell or a lack of rain. While I was looking up drought, I found something pretty cool. The driest desert on earth is the South American Atacama Desert. It's located between the countries of Chile and Peru. There may have been a drought that lasted 400 years, and part of the desert may have never received any rainfall ever. The desert is said to closely resemble the surface of Mars. I would encourage you to look up the desert. It's pretty cool. Then we have the word appease. Appease means to relieve or satisfy a demand or feeling. Now, we just talked about drought. If you were a farmer, depending on rain to grow your crops, nothing would be more appeasing than a heavy rain. Would you agree? I think so. Our next word is privilege. A privilege is a special benefit or advantage enjoyed by a person. A privilege is something to enjoy, but it can be taken away. For example, being able to play with a certain toy, maybe watch a movie or a show, or being able to go on a visit to a friend's house. You may enjoy those things, but if your behavior uh, is bad, then your parents may take that away. And our last word is pension. A pension is typically a yearly allowance of an amount of money given to a person by a government because of past civil or military service. Uh, sometimes people still get pensions when they retire from a workplace, but those are fading away. Those are our lost and found words. Now on to the show. Today, I have three fables from India. The fable has come to be the commonly accepted name for the well-known collection of stories about animals. The fable about animals is probably the oldest form of story known and can be found in the literature of almost every nation. Its object is to teach a lesson to men and women without seeming to do so. And because of this hidden lesson, it has always been a great favorite with all nations. In Russia, for example, where a man did not dare say what he thought about a government officer, he could tell a fable about the dog in the manger. Have you heard the fable about the tortoise and the hare? The lesson is slow and steady wins the race. The Indian fables I have today are likely to be new to the majority of listeners. 
In the characters of animals, the same rules are observed as in Western fables. The following animal characters are in our stories today. The fox is the symbol of intelligence and cunning. The wolf is cruel and ferocious. The camel, rude and snobbish. And the pig, filthy, ugly, and greedy. As you listen, think about how the animals talk and behave. Do they behave as I described? In the future, you will now notice how animals are portrayed in the stories you read and watch. Many of the characters originate from fables. Camel and the Pig by Rami Swaju <laughs> by Rama Swami Raju. A camel said, Nothing like being tall. Look how tall I am. <laughs> yes, I am so tall. A pig, who heard these words, said, That's nonsense and rubbish. There's nothing like being short. Look how short I am. <laughs> well, if I fail to prove the truth of what I said, I shall give up my hump. Well, well, if I fail to prove the truth of what I have said, I shall give up my snout. Agreed. Well, just so. They came to a garden enclosed by a low wall without any opening. The camel stood on this side of the wall and reaching the plants within, by means of his long neck, made a breakfast on them. Then he turned jeeringly to the pig, who had been standing at the bottom of the wall, without even having a look at the good things in the garden, and said, Now, would you be tall or short? Next they came to a garden, enclosed by a high wall, with a wicket gate at one end. The pig entered by the gate, and, after having eaten his fill of the vegetables within, came out laughing at the poor camel, who had to stay outside because he was too tall to enter the garden by the gate, and said, Now, now, would you be tall or short? Then they thought the matter over and came to the conclusion that the camel should keep his hump and the pig his snout, observing, Tall is good, where tall would do, and of short again, tis also true. The Sea, the Fox, and the Wolf by Ramaswamy Raju A fox that lived by the seashore once met a wolf that had never seen the sea the wolf said, What is the sea? Oh, it's a great piece of water by my dwelling, said the fox. Is it under your control? Certainly. Oh, will you show me the sea then? With pleasure. So the fox led the wolf to the sea and said to the waves, Now, go back. They went back. Now, come up and they came up. Then the fox said to the waves, My friend the wolf has come to see you, so you will come up and go back till I bid you stop. And the wolf saw with wonder the waves coming up and going back. He said to the fox, May I go into the sea? As far as you like. Don't be afraid, for at a word the sea would go or come as I bid, and as you have already seen. The wolf believed the fox and followed the waves rather far out from the shore. A great wave soon upset him and threw his carcass on the shore. The fox made a hearty breakfast on it. The Fox and the Whale by Ramos 
Wadji Raju. A fox fell into a well and was holding hard to some roots at the side of it, just above the water. A wolf, who was passing by, saw him and said, Hello, Reynard. After all, you have fallen into a well. But not without a purpose, and not without the means of getting out of it. What do you mean? Why, there is a drought all over the country now, and the water in this well is the only means of appeasing the thirst of the thousands that live in this neighborhood. They held a meeting and requested me to keep the water from going down lower. So I'm holding it up for the public good. Oh, what will be your reward? Oh, they will give me a pension and save me the trouble of going about every day in quest of food. Not to speak of innumerable other privileges that will be granted me. Further, I am not to stay here all day. I have asked a kinsman of mine, to whom I have communicated the secret of holding up the water, to relieve me from time to time. Of course, he will also get a pension and have other privileges. I expect him here shortly. Ah, Reynard, may I relieve you then? May I hope to get a pension and other privileges? You know what a sad lot is mine, especially in winter. Certainly, but you must get a long rope that I may come up and let you in. So the wolf got a rope. Up came the fox and down went the wolf when the former observed with a laugh. My dear sir, you may remain there till doomsday or till the owner of the well throws up your carcass. And the fox left the place. Well, what did you think? Did the animals live up to the descriptions I listed earlier? Was the fox cunning and intelligent, for example? I usually like to provide a little lesson from the story, but since fables try to tell a lesson without seeming to do so, I want you to try and think what the lessons could be on your own. You can always go back and listen again to refresh your memory. I will leave you with one thing that stood out to me in the fox in the well. The part that grabbed my attention was how the fox tempted the wolf to drop him a rope and switch places with him. Do you remember what he promised the wolf? A pension and privileges. That's money and special benefits. This must have appealed to the wolf's love of money and wanting to feel like a special boy compared to others. When the wolf accepted the fox's ticket to money and status, his life was doomed. This made me think of two words of wisdom from the Bible. The first is the love of money is the root of all evil, written in the book of Matthew. And the second, the gate is large and the road is wide that leads to ruin. Many people go that way, but the gate is small and the road is narrow that leads to life. Only a few people find it. I couldn't help but think of this when the wolf chose the easy path of almost free money and status because he didn't want to endure the hardship of winter. Well, that's all for this week, Junior Scholars, in our series on Tales from India. Until next time, I am Sir Bradley Hassey. Be brave, be loyal, and speak the truth. Now, for you parents out there, I want you to understand why we are doing this, what we are trying to achieve, and how you can help us. This is a rescue operation to preserve the classics and the wisdom within before it is lost forever. Our goal is to inspire children with a love of good reading by safeguarding and breathing new life into the greatest stories in history and empower you, the parents, with a resource you can trust to enrich your child's mind and spirit. We don't want these stories and the wisdom within to be forgotten so our children don't have to learn these lessons on their own. The most important thing you can do for us is to spread the message and tell others about these stories and what we are doing. If you want to donate, we would love that as well. My promise is that 100% of donations will go to building the impact and quality of the Junior Classics. If you have feedback and thoughts on how we can do things better, please send an email to junior classics podcast at gmail.com. Thanks 
for listening to the Junior Classics.